Today is Tuesday, May 15th, 2018. We are at the Moline Public Library in Moline, Illinois. My name is Jan LaRoche, and I will be interviewing Stanley Burich for the Illinois Veterans History Project on behalf of the Moline Public Library. Stanley was born on August 2nd, 1925, and is 92 years old. First of all, Stanley, thank you for being a part of this project. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a few questions before we get started with your service about what your life was like before you started serving them. What was your childhood like? Where were you born? I was born in, in well, I was actually born in the hospital in Moline, of course, but I was from East Moline, Illinois, and East Moline was a small town, about 10,000 people then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was an ordinary kid, I guess. I mean, we were, I, uh, the Depression was on, of course, and during the Depression, you know, every nickel counted, so I started caddying when I was at Short Hills Country Club. Mm -hmm. Well, we called it the golf links then, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it was when I was 10, I, of course, I would have been 11 soon, but uh, that summer. And, uh, and then I... I love sports. I played football, basketball, loved golf. And when I was, well, uh, uh, when I was a senior in high school, we went to the state golf tournament. We won the, the title of uh, the regional and sectional around in this area. And then went to, and I, went to state, but we never won state. We were right about in the middle of everybody. But anyway, uh, I was captain of the basketball team my senior year. I was uh, elected king of high school that year. In fact, when <laughs> it's another story, but anyway. <laughs> and uh, I, I, had, I had a good I thought I had good childhood life, you know. I loved, like I said, I loved to play golf. I played, I ended up, uh, in my lifetime, playing probably for 60 years or more. So. <laughs> what were your parents like? What did they do? Uh, well, my, uh, my mother and dad, of course, came from Europe. And, uh, uh, my dad only had uh, four years of schooling over in Europe, came over here, uh, became, worked as, work, well, he started out working at a, at a lumber camp. And then, he, and then he went into body and fender work, and as a result of this body, worked for the Moline Body Company when he was, when he first came to, into this area, and uh, as a result of that, went to work at John Deere, and became one of the main people in the sheet metal department there, making combines and so forth. And uh, at that time, uh, they were all their stuff went on a flat car, you know. That's how they were trans. Well, if that car had a scratch on it, he came in on Saturdays and would take care of that. That was his job. He loved that. It was overtime. <laughs> no. Then when the war broke out, who did they send to California to make airplane wings? My dad. Four years of schooling. <laughs> but, but he was smart and I figured he taught me a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, could do most anything, I thought. Any brothers or sisters? Uh, well, I was, I was, I was in a family that uh, actually I had two brothers and a sister. They were my half brothers and sisters, but uh, I was the youngest, of course. So I was really the only child of my mother and father. But uh, like I said, they were all older than me. My youngest brother, my 
the youngest closest to me was born, I was born in 25, he was born in 20, so he was five years younger than me, and we got along great. In fact, we owned a 43-unit apartment complex together, and he died when he was 50, he died in 1977, went early. And uh, the other two were kind of, I'd see him, but they were, they weren't close to me at all. Anybody else in your family serve in the military? My brother, John, the one that was close to me, yes, he was, he was on a landing, landing barge ship uh, and, and served in, uh, he was in the Philippines, in that area. At the yeah. same time as you? Yeah, well I was in another part of the, mm -hmm. the Pacific, but he was, his, he was more in that area. So I never got to see him. And when I was on the funny, here was the funny thing, I came from a town of about 10,000 people. When I got on Guam, I met eight people from East Moline <laughs> on there. That's how, that's how small the world really is, you know what I mean? And so, so I meet these people on there, you know, and, and there was more there yet. I mean, I didn't even know it. <laughs> But so that little town had these people right out there in that area, you know. It was quite uh, quite a deal, I thought. So did you um, did you enlist or were you drafted? No, I was drafted. I was drafted once when I graduated from high school. I wasn't eighteen yet. I wasn't eighteen till I graduated in June. I was eighteen on August second. So when I signed up, I told myself, "Well, just put me on the next list," you know. So, so then they, so then in September they sent me to Chicago or to, a, I think it was Sheridan or Camp Grad, I don't remember. And then, uh, then they sent us back home. And then the first of October, the first part of October, we went in, really went into service. What branch were you in? I was in the Army Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, that at that time there wasn't really no Air Force, you know, I mean, the, the Air Force really wasn't <laughs> there yet. Mm -hmm. But, I was, so I was in the Army Air Force, and the Army Air Force was quite a deal, I thought. It was good. I liked it. What yeah. was your, uh, the first uh, few weeks and months of your uh, service was like, what was that like? Where well, did you train? we went into, I went into training at, um, they sent us to um, Amarillo, Texas for basic training. When we got there for basic training, I didn't realize it at the time that they cut a month of that off and sent us to gunnery school at Laredo, Texas. When we got to Laredo, Texas, they cut a month off there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I never, we never realized it at the time, but I think it was pushing us to get, <laughs> to get somewhere else. So anyway, uh, so when we finished training at Laredo, Texas, they gave us 10 days to go home, get all your legal stuff taken care of, and, and out to California, to Fresno, California. So, so uh, a fellow from Springfield, John Conley, and myself, we rode back to get, we rode back together. He got off at Springfield, and, and I went on to Moline, you know, to East Moline, and and uh, and he, I said, he said, well, I'll meet you in Kansas City on this day. So we met in Kansas City on that day and traveled out to California together on the train. They stopped at every, they used to stop at every station. I think it takes about a day and a half, two days to get out. There. But anyway, we made it, and, and then we were assigned to Cruz. And uh, he went, I don't remember where he went, but I went to Marchfield, California. What did you do in the service? I was a tail gunner. We went to, we went to different schools, at different parts, learning all the, uh, the turrets and everything, and learned all about the guns and everything, you know, you had to go to school and everything, and, and then you had to fly these practice missions, and, 
and uh, practice bombing runs and all this stuff and training and that. And then, uh, uh, and I think they cut a month off there. I don't know, but it was, it was, everything was, was kind of real quick. And then they, tra they, we went from, I went from Marchfield to Hammerfield, Hamilton Field, uh, just outside of San Francisco. And we we went down there and did, and uh, then from there they sent us over to Hawaii. How, how did you adjust to military life? Did you? Oh, well, I I just fine. I didn't mind it, you know. Uh, I think when you're young, you can adjust to these things, you know, very quick. And I I I didn't mind it. I, and the people I the the guy. When you're on a crew, you're living with these people day in and day out, you know. And they were all nice guys, and we had a lot of, you know, things in common. And, of course, I was the youngest one in the crew. You know, they were, they went up to, well, I was, I was only, like I said, I was 19. And they were... They were, most of them were old, quite a bit older than me, but, but we got along fine and uh, trained. And then in our training, we would uh, uh, fly, you know, different places. And, and we, were, we were always checking for submarines and stuff like that when we were in Hawaii uh, flying uh, practice missions and that, you know. And it was interesting. And so you served during World War II, correct? Right. And where were you stationed during the war? Where did you do most of your work? Uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. Well, then we went. Uh, when we went to to um, Hawaii there, and then and then we then uh, then they broke uh, they broke our crew up because the bombardier did drop. We were practice, you know, you practice bombs and, and you navigate, and the navigator wasn't navigating. <laughs> so anyway, well, <laughs> this is the way it was, you know. I mean, you have to be truthful. If it didn't work. We weren't working as a crew, so they broke us up, and and uh, and I went to Guam, and. You know, as an extra, and and uh, so I would only get to fly if somebody, if there was a tail gunner, killed or or if if they needed uh, a lot of times I I flew a couple of missions as a photographer because uh, see on a B twenty four bomber you have an exit hole on the bottom. And on the bottom of this, usually they put a cam, big camera in there. When you made a, when you were making your bombing runs, you always had a camera in there, and it would take pictures of everything that's going on. Well, a lot of times that camera's straight down, you know, and of course it's wide and it's taking big shots. But when a lot of times when they would go over these targets, there would be stuff on the side that they want pictures of. And I flew a mission taking those pictures and that because we were flying like truck was uh, was a was a, a, a group of islands that the Japanese held and they were and they they had uh, a lot of stuff there. It was it was kind of like a an area where they would bring stuff in and take it to other islands and that's all. So we, we would keep, try to neutralize that, keep it neutralized as much as we could. This was during the war. So a lot of times you never seen a lot of this stuff that was because if you were going this way and this stuff was over here. You wouldn't get pictures of it. So we would take pictures of that sometimes because we would get anti-aircraft shots from there, you know, and that. So we always wanted to know where that stuff was. And then they could take care of it, you know. What other duties did you have while you were serving? What, as a, 
Well, I flew as a tail gunner. Mm -hmm. That's what, and you're well. you when you go when you fly, you uh, you have to make sure your ammunition and everything was was right, and you had to have uh, uh, your you had every every time you flew a mission, your duties were this, basically the same, but you had to get them done. And, Pick, put, set your guns in, get them all ready to go, and everything. And you did that, all that. And it was it was uh, quite a little task. You do that before breakfast. You <laughs> <laughs> wake up, you go down the line, <laughs> down the line, and do all these little things that you had to do. And then, and then you come back and have your breakfast because you could fly anywhere from eight. To 12, 14 hours, it all depends where you were going, mm -hmm. you know. If you were going, a, a lot of times we would, if you were going on certain missions, you might fly, we might fly from, uh, from Guam to, to, uh, to another island, pick up stuff and go from there, you know, so. Did you see any direct combat? Huh? Did you see any combat? Oh yes, it was in combat every time you flew. Oh. <laughs> every mission you flew, you were in combat. I mean, uh, we could. We, uh, there was never a time when you weren't in combat. Any any mission you flew, that was combat. Because well, I mean, you could. There could be army pl uh, enemy planes, or always always had an aircraft. You never. Mm -hmm. I mean, any time you came around, you was always being shot at. You know. So wherever you went, there's no, there's no, there's never a time when you flew a mission that you didn't get at least somebody, so you know something shot at you. It was always that. Do you have any particular memories of your time while you were stationed in Guam? When I was stationed in Guam. Any. Oh, well, yeah, I met the natives. <laughs> Well, no, it was, uh, they, uh, Guam was, was ours before the war, you know, and, and the people that lived on Guam were Chamorros, you know, and, uh, I became real good friends with, they used to do my laundry, <laughs> yeah, I used to do my laundry, and, and they, and, uh, and I, uh, I'd go over and talk. In fact, I have pictures of them and everything else. And uh, <laughs> but anyway, and they would uh, always get their tuba juice. You know, that's from the coconut tree. <laughs> that's what you drink. Oh man, it smelled bad. <laughs> but you'd have to have a drink with them. <laughs> you know, when you came over to their house. Uh, it, it didn't want to drink it, but you did. You had to. And they do my, well his wife would, uh, there was a uncle and, uh, and then his, uh, his grandson, grand, uh, the, this young, young man and, uh, and his wife and she did our lawn, she did my laundry. <laughs> she used to do my laundry for me. <laughs> because a lot of times I didn't want to mess around with it, she'd do it and, and, uh, and you know, and they'd always have. Every time you went over there, you had to have a drink of tuba juice. That was stuff that came out of coconut tree. Oh man, that was bad. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was. Uh, I had a lot of pleasant experiences with them. What other friends did you have while you were serving? Oh, I had all kinds of friends. I mean, yeah. from all over, most of them, you know. But uh, they were. They were all good friends, they were all good people. Really, I liked, I was in a group I thought that was, that was really nice. Uh, I slept in a, when I came there, I slept in a tent with the, there were six of us in a tent. Usually if you're coming as a crew, uh, the, you know, the whole crew sleeps in the same tent. But, but I came as an extra, so I, was put in a crew with, and uh, I slept with, uh, with, with uh, the main photographer for, uh, 
for the squadron. Well, he wasn't the main one, but he was one of them. His name was Billy Growl. He was from Louisiana, and <laughs> he was a character. But anyway, uh, uh, I flew a mission for him. You know, uh, like I said, uh, a lot of times the the cameras on the ship don't take pictures of what you want to take, and so. Uh, we were looking for uh, any aircraft places, you know, that would fire at you, but they were off on the side, you don't get pictures of them. Well, then we take these pictures, and then they did planes go over to get them, you know, afterwards, like, when they know where they were at so they could find them. Otherwise, they're camouflaged, you can't find them, you know. But on the pictures, you could see them then. So, so that's what, that was, one of the things I, I got to do that was different than yeah. being a gunner on the ship, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. And you meet all these, I think one of the most important things that you, that, that, that I learned was people from the different parts of the country, you know. I mean, they're all different. I mean, you, you just can't believe, like I said, Billy Grout was, a, was from Louisiana, from Louisiana, you know, and he was different. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you just run into these people that are that that are a story in themselves when you when you're around them. They were all good people, but I mean, it was just the different in the parts of the country, you know. And I, I enjoyed I enjoyed my time in the service. I really did. Outside of the when you're out on combat mission, you know. Were you still serving when the war ended, or were you home already? Uh, well, I uh, I came home. Uh, when did I come home? I came home. Uh, October nineteen forty-five. Huh? You wrote down October nineteen forty-five. Uh, yeah, that's. That's when I, uh, let's see, I was discharged. I came home, wait a minute, I was, I was in, at Hickam Field when the war was over. Okay. I was at Hickam Yeah, yeah. I was at Hickam Field when the war was over because because they picked me up. I'm trying to think, my memory. Yeah. See, I don't ever. Th I never think about these things. To, now that you're asking me, now I have to think about this. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I was at Hickam Field when the war was over. Uh, yeah, we were. I was. I was at Hickam Field the Hospital up there. We were. Well, we were. I'd. I'd got a new tooth put in. I'd. Uh, yeah. What was it like hearing the news that it was that the war was over? Oh, great. <laughs> well, I was going to go down under anyway, again. But uh, but I was at, we were uh, we were at Hickam Field. Uh, that was in uh, Wahoo, and when the war was over, and uh, and uh, and they put us on a boat, and we sat on that boat for two or three days. And then we made it to um, uh, to Seattle, Washington. And uh, when we came, got to Seattle, Washington, that that camp was all they had all prisoners of war from Europe, working, doing stuff. Very nice people, you know. I mean, they were prisoners of war, but they were they were good people. Anyway, they were they were serving us. <laughs> yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was it like when you came back home to Illinois? Oh, it was great. I liked it. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was interesting. I uh, I was only eight, I was only twenty years old. But I hit every bar there was. We were supposed to be twenty one. And and uh, the the police and that were very good. <laughs> But it was, it was it was great. I was. It took me a while to get settled, you know, and everything. And uh, uh, I had some bad times, but uh, but it was great to be home. <laughs> what did you end up doing after you got home? Well, after I got home, I uh, I I. I thought I'd, I'd go to St. Ambrose College. That was in Davenport here. And, uh, and of course, I, I, went, I went over for a year, but I couldn't, I just couldn't sit still. I mean, I passed everything, and you know, it was fine and everything. And, uh, and so when summer vacation came, uh, I went down to, to sign up for unemployment because we could get unemployment, you know. And, because uh, we didn't have a job, of course. We <laughs> wasn't going to get a job. So anyway, I signed up for unemployment and and the gal that signed, us, signed me up, well, I, was, I suppose I was a wise guy. Well, we all were wise guys. And sent me in to see the the main gal, <laughs> and, and so she, she was an older lady, and she said, from now on, I don't want you talking to none of these young women out here. She says, you just come in and see me. So here we had these long lines, you know, and I just walk in, walk into her office, sign a slip for my check, you know, what? <laughs> and I'd be over there drinking beer, and these guys, all my buddies are waiting in line, you know. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, she, she says, so she said, uh, well, this, this fella came in, and he's looking for workers, you know, construction notice. And she said, he's looking for workers, and I thought of you, she said, and I thought, yeah, she, thought of me. she wants to get rid of you, but she wants, you know. <laughs> I knew what she was thinking, you know. <laughs> you can add two and two real quick, you know. <laughs> and I said, uh, so anyway, she says, well, I said, well, I'll, I'll go over and see him, you know. So I went over, and it was, it happened to be in the Molette housing. Do you know of that? In Moline? It was that housing. These two old guys are in there. Well, one old guy was from East Moline. I was from East Moline. He knew my name. He said, uh, Roy, I'll talk to this guy. <laughs> so he gets me over the corner. And so he said, uh, he talked me into taking the job. You know, so I took the job. I was carrying his tools around with him. <laughs> He, he was, he was a, his name was Oscar Lundin, he was a politician, is what he was. <laughs> anyway, and we were, it was a laughing industry. You know what laughing is? Okay. It was, what, you know, what you do before plaster. Well, there's a lot more to it than just that. So at the time they were building Molet up there. And that's where, that's where I went to work up there. For these guys, and I became a lather by trade, and I ended up a lather carpenter. And but anyway, it was a good job for me. We were working sixty hours a week and getting paid for eighty. It was an all double time, and it was a good job. So I ended up 
in the laughing trade, which turned me into a carpenter, which I went into carpenter in that, and uh, made a good living. Did um, did your experiences in the service and, and serving during the war uh, affect you at all in your later life, or I don't did think you learn so. Learn anything, or I don't think so. It it. Uh, I thought it was a good experience myself. I mean, I mean, you know, army life is tough. I mean, it really is. I mean, you, it's no bowl of cherries. But at the same time, like, it was very interesting to me. I thought because it was a, there was a lot of things go on, and <laughs> you're always thinking. <laughs> you never know whether you're going to live tomorrow or not. You know, I always enjoy today and. And the people I was around, I thought were all good people, you know, and then, and uh, I thought I had a good life in service, really. I really did, I mean, sure, could have been killed at any time, you know, There's a, but when, when you stopped, when I stopped and thought about all the things that happened to me, I thought, I was lucky. Very lucky, you know, and that, but I don't regret it, <laughs> you know. You brought some things to show us here, right? Oh, I was going to, well, th this was, uh, uh, this was the pouch that, they, that we took for, when we used to fly over to China, they gave you, they put $5,000 in there, each one of these, mm -hmm. when you flew and that, you know, but I was going to show you this, this was my, This was my flight record right there. Okay. This right here. Okay. What else have you got there? And this was a picture of the fellow that brought me back from the hospital in Okinawa okay. to to. Uh, to Hawaii, you know, and this was this was uh, the pic. I mean, this is a picture of th this is myself. And this was the this was my pilot. He was two years older than me, <laughs> and this was a fellow from Georgia. Uh, he 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 would fly with us once in a while. He was killed in, in the war. He never okay. made it. And this was the crew that I tr that I trained with. When we went overseas, then they broke us up, and all we all went different directions. Are you in this photo? Yeah, that's the me. one that's circled. You see, that's me right there with the circle around okay. it. That was me. I okay. weighed, I weighed quite a bit there. This is a f crew that I flew with. And they all signed it for me. <laughs> I flew a few missions. Uh, I think four or five missions. Four or five missions. I don't remember. Okay. But they signed that for me. This is a crew I flew eight missions, seven missions with, or eight missions. That uh, he was a captain there. Mm -hmm. uh, he was from Lincoln, Illinois, and I flew with him. Okay. You know, and these were some these were some pamphlets that we dropped when we were uh, we're flying over Japan. You know, mm -hmm. propaganda stuff. You know. These, every time you flew over there, you had these things to, to uh, drop, you know. They, they just tell you about different, you know, that, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing those with us. Yeah. Um, is there anything... This was, this was the one you took over, this is the pods over China, mm -hmm. for flying over China, because... This said uh, would have $5,000 in it. Mm -hmm. Good money. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not just uh, any money, you know, it was good money. They never let you keep the money. They let you keep the, this, because they all had a number on them. And that was my number, see. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but, but they, they always took the money back. <laughs> they wouldn't let you keep the money. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to share with us or something we haven't touched on? 
Well, I thought, I thought every, I, I thought it, it was, it was a, it was an experience that you'll never forget, you know, and it's, I thought it was, it was rewarding in a way, because it makes you realize what's, what's going on in the world, you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, yeah. first of all, for taking the time to come in well, and talk to us, and also thank you very much for your service well, to our country. Well, I'm just thankful that I made it through this. <laughs> we are too. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, these, these times, you know, the times, uh, that, they were, there were some tough times in there, but there were some good, good times too, really. I mean, you meet a lot of people that you never forget. Thank you very much.